Hey everyone, today I'll be trying to solve this puzzle called the Rubik's Clock. This puzzle has nine clocks which you can turn using the dials on these four sides. Now the goal of this puzzle is to get all of these to point to the top at the two red lines. Right now, if I turn any of these dials, then all of the clocks will turn together. But what you can do is move these dials up and down in order to get the clocks to move differently. Any pins that are up are going to move all of the clocks around it all at the same time. So if I turn either of these two dials, we're gonna get all six clocks around the top turning together. Let's just put this one down. And if you turn this, it only turns the corner. And if I add another one to it, then these two corners can turn together. So all the pins that are up will turn the clocks around them together, and all the pins that are down will turn the clocks on the corners together. And the last thing you need to know about this puzzle is there's another side. And this side works exactly the same. If there's a pin up on the first side, it will be down on the other side. And then so this will only turn the corners along with the other down pin, and the two up pins will turn everything around them together. And again, the goal of this puzzle is to get all of these to point upwards at the two red lines here and on this side. This puzzle is called the Rubik's Clock, but it really has not much to do with the Rubik's Cube besides who made it. But then probably because it was a puzzle made by Rubik's just like the Rubik's Cube, it found its way into the World Cube Association. Okay, now I'm gonna get started and I don't know how I'm gonna make sure that both sides are both making progress because they affect each other. Any turn that I do like this is going to be affecting the other side at the same time. Although not by very much if if it's just this corner being affected and this one turns a lot at once. Okay, so I'm just imagining I'm gonna make something on this side probably and then move on to the other side. And if I do anything on this side, the best way to preserve my work from the first side is if I only work with the up pins, that way the first side doesn't really move too much, but the corners will still move. So. I think I shouldn't solve the corners in the beginning. I should probably just solve the cross and see how that goes. And that's pretty much what I do on 3x3, so hopefully this is also the right thing to do. Let's just get started with anything. These two are now solved. Um, then I'm going to work with another up pin. Actually, I want probably... I could do this one last or maybe do it right now. So I'm just trying to think, how can I turn this one without turning the two I just solved? I guess I could do an up pin over here and move that up. There we go, I've solved these three. Let's see, maybe I'll solve this one as well to also be pointing up. And okay, so if I turn this side or this side, either way, it's going to be affecting things I've already done. Unless I, unless I get them all to match these three, I can just match it with that one. Okay, <laughs> going well so far. Uh, and then I can get all of these pointing up like this. Oh, and I've actually skipped this one. So I've finished the cross on the first side. If I only work with up pins on this side, it should be able to preserve the cross. So let's see, this pin is up. And that means if I turn any of this stuff, it doesn't affect the cross from the first side. So that's perfect. Okay, so I'll do the same thing as on the first side. Um, I'll start with this one and let's see. Okay, uh, last time I just had two of them matching already by luck, but I guess this time I'll solve one of them. And then I could solve the other one by turning this, getting that pin up so I can turn this one. Now these two are solved. Okay, same idea as before. I'll solve this one by turning this side. So this pin up and solve that. All right, these three are done. Then, okay, what did I, what did I do last time? Uh, I can't turn either of these two sides because it's going to affect the middle one. So I need, yeah, yeah, okay. So I needed these two to like be in sync with each other. So I'll turn the three solved ones to match that one and then get this pin up so they can all turn together. Okay, now these are solved. Now I need this one. So I need to match all my solved clocks to be the same as that. So these pins are already the correct ones. Now they're matching. Now I want the whole thing solved so I could do all the pins. All right, there we go. So far, not too hard. I've made the cross on both sides. Actually, I was a little bit scared when I turned it over, um, but good thing I didn't mess up the cross on that side because I only turned with up pins and that only affects the corners on the side. Okay, the next step is to solve all of these corners. So if 
I have the pins down, so let's just get one of them down, then I can just turn the corner and solve it, but that's not gonna work because what it does is it, it makes an up pin on the other side and then all the cross uh, clocks that I've solved are also going to be off. Oh, wait, that one's, these are both matching. Uh... Oh yeah, okay. I, I really doubt this is luck because um, it's all matching, but if the cross is done on both sides, it seems like all of the outer clocks are going to match each other. So see how these are pointing in the same direction? I assume that means if I solve one side now, um, of course, without messing up the cross I made on this side, then it should solve everything. But I don't know if this is just the way it is because I've gotten crazy luck in puzzles that I've done for the first time before. Okay, so I need to move these corners somehow. So my first thought is what I was doing earlier for the cross is instead of turning, turning the one I want to turn, I'll turn other things to match it and then get them all to turn together at the end. So I think what I'll try now is by having only the up pins turning, so I'll never turn a down pin like that. Um, using only the up pins, I want to get all of the cross clocks to point in the same direction as one of these corners, and then I can turn them all to face up at the end. So I definitely can't be turning this one because it's just gonna affect all of these together at once, which means if these are not aligned, then they'll never be aligned. So I probably wanna turn something else first. If I just turn all of these, oh, that was easy. <laughs> that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Yeah, I'm not really not used to like the fact that multiple pins can turn together. So then um, I just kind of forget about all that stuff you can do. Okay, wait, wait a minute. Am I done? Is that it? Okay, I just take the three that are not the corner I wanna solve match them to the corner I wanna solve, and then just turn everything together at once. Oh, this is so easy. I'm done. <laughs> I'm actually done. Oh no. I mean, I'm happy that I solved it really quickly actually, like way faster than I thought I would. But this puzzle is too easy. So a little while ago, I did a video just like this, but me trying to solve a square one for the first time. When I was filming that video, I had hours and hours of footage of me trying to solve it and condensed it into a shorter video. But for solving the clock, the real amount of time it took me was basically the length of this video. As everything I was trying to figure out didn't require experimentation, I just did it on the spot and it worked. Okay, now I'll try doing a time solve and I don't normally do this, but this, this puzzle was so easy that I feel like it, Kind of makes sense to, to try this. Okay, so I'm about to do my first ever time solve of this. And just for reference, my first timed three by three solve, I think was around four or five minutes because I just learned the method and I had to memorize some algorithms. So even by then I'd practiced a lot to be able to know the algorithm so I can do it without looking at any guide. And now this is something I just figured out. It's my second time ever solving it. And I think I'm going to probably do this in under a minute. So the first thing was the cross and I needed uh, one of, needed this inner clock to match something. So I guess I could match it to this one first and then I get them all to match something else, something else, something else, and then I finish the whole cross. Uh, okay, let's, wait, what pin do I do first? I guess this pin's okay. Yeah, okay, let's start. So match it to the top one, uh, and then this pin, and so I'm just getting the cross now, uh, these two, and, now the whole thing. Okay, other side. Um, this pin is okay, match. Wait, no, don't turn that. Um, match the top and the right side is done. And match the left side. Match the bottom and everything to the top. All right, that's good, just making sure. And then now I wanna solve top left corner, so I'll turn everything else to match it. And then, oh, I can just skip the next part. Okay, turn everything else, just match this one, and then match this one, and I am done. I hope I'm done. Yes, I'm done. That was, that was just under a minute.
I imagine that a good speed solving method would like maybe optimize some of this, combine some of the steps, but I can already see the possibility of like, if I practiced, I could use this exact method and get under 10 seconds. Of course, I need to put in a lot of practice and get pretty lucky as well, but I just, I just think it's kind of dumb that the very first thing I thought of for how to do each thing kind of ended up being the, the right thing to do, and it's still a pretty good method. Oh, and I forgot to mention, so I've been calling this a Rubik's Clock, but that's just the name of, I guess, the, the type of puzzle this is. The exact puzzle I'm using, I'll link in the description, it's a Qi magnetic clock. And so I'm, I'm no expert on clock hardware, but I've been told that this is by far the best one that exists today. So I only noticed the magnets in the pins, so that would be like this. It's super easy to get them to the other side really quickly. But there's also magnets in these that I didn't notice because they are gears, so I thought they'd just kind of snap. But not, now that I think about it, if I move it slightly, it, the force kind of just takes it away like, like like that. So there are magnets in all of the clocks as well uh, that the pins control. And if you buy this from the link in the description, make sure to use the discount code JPERM. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.